Our scripture reading tonight is from the Gospel of John. It's the first 14 verses. And I, I've, I've noticed that a couple people just even looking at the bulletin at a glance think that this is the first weekend of Advent because of the way this is set up. No, no. This is the Advent of Advent. We are actually using tonight to help ourselves prepare for Advent, which begins next week. And I think that this particular scripture helps us understand that. If you would please stand for the reading of the Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life, life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks God. God. You may be seated. So just two days ago, we were eating turkey dinner and eating and eating and eating. I hope that, I hope that you all had a good Thanksgiving, however you spent it. I hope that it was satisfying to you in some way and that you indeed felt thankful. I certainly felt thankful. Um, I was able to spend Thanksgiving with both my children at my mother's home with both of my siblings and their families. And it's been a while since all of us have been under the same roof. And my mother is not well and hasn't been for a while and isn't getting any better. And so it was particularly important that we have this time together. I was particularly thankful for my brother-in-law, who is a wonderful photographer and very thoughtfully brought his camera and his tripod, and we took a family portrait on Thanksgiving. I thought that was a wonderful thing for him to think about. I'm thankful for my sister-in-law, who called my mother about a month before Thanksgiving and asked if she could please prepare the entire Thanksgiving dinner in Des Moines and, and bring it with her to Columbia, Missouri. And my mother said, of course. She was delighted. So my sister-in-law did this, and I don't know how she did it, but it was one of the best meals I have ever had. I am so thankful for her. Another thing that I'm particularly thankful about when it comes to Thanksgiving, November 22nd this particular year, is that that is my daughter's birthday. My eldest daughter turned 21. And uh, she, I can't tell you how many times over the last couple days she said to me, can you believe I've turned 21 years old? Can you believe I'm 21 years old? And the thing was, it was hard for me to explain to her was, OK, when you turn 21, it is a milestone, absolutely. What was much more jarring for me was last year when she turned 20 and was no longer a teenager. That was much more um, difficult for me. This young woman has, has grown and matured, and it's not at all hard for me to believe that she's 21 years old. And there was a time when she was young when her birthday fell on or close to Thanksgiving. It made her crazy because the last place she wanted to be was with a bunch of old relatives on her birthday. She wanted to be home having a birthday party. And what I really appreciated was there's no place she would have rather been on her birthday than with all, than with all of us, which was wonderful. Um, on my kids' birthdays, I also have a son who's turning 18 in December. And on my kids' birthdays, it's not at all unusual for me to spend time reminiscing. To, to think about their childhoods, to think about um, their growing up, and to look at photo albums and memories. And OK, 
This is kind of like confession, and you might think this is really weird, but in a box, I have both of the pregnancy tests that came up plus for my kids. <laughs> okay, I know that's weird, right? Okay, okay, but I have them, and I pull them out. And, you know, I'll tell you what, I remember with Valerie, this was our first child. Okay, we'd been trying for a little while, and I took these little tests, and they came up with a little negative sign, negative, ne and I thought that would happen again. This plus sign came up, and it was like, oh my gosh, it's exactly what you're wanting, exactly what you're hoping for, and at the same time you're thinking, what have we done? <laughs> oh my gosh, what have we done? So I hung on to that. And when, when I am waiting for something that I'm excited about, when something is coming that I really, really want, I am usually fairly impatient in my waiting. But I'll tell you what, when it comes to a child, I was really thankful for the time that we had to wait. Because this wasn't just waiting, it was, it was active waiting. It was time to prepare. We'd never had a child before, so we started doing a lot of reading. That what to expect when you're expecting became my Bible on my bedside table. We had things that we needed to do with our house. We had furniture in time that we needed to get. We had, you know, a crib and a, and a, and a rocker and a changing table and, and you needed a stroller and a car seat. Eventually, all these things, all these things to think about. We both, we took a couple classes. I mean, we were really kind of nervous about all of this. We had practical things to prepare for. Practical things within our home and in this, this world that our daughter would be coming into. Just as important though, if not more important, we really needed time to prepare ourselves mentally and emotionally for the arrival of this new person in our lives. We needed time to prepare our minds and our hearts for this child who was coming into our lives, this child whose arrival would change our lives forever. And we all know what this is like. Anytime you are waiting for a child, whether you are waiting as a mother or father, as a grandparent, as an aunt or an uncle, as, as a dear, dear friend, whether you are waiting for a, a, a child to be born directly into your family or you're waiting for adoption to take place, anytime we are preparing for a beloved child, we need to do it because that child will change our lives <coughs> forever. We do well to prepare. And because of the preparation that I was able to have with Valerie, my daughter, the time I was able to spend preparing myself for her arrival, when she was born and put into my arms for the first time, I was already in love with her. The first time her grandparents laid eyes on her, they were already in love with her. That time of preparation is critical and absolutely precious. Speaking of preparing for the arrival of a child that will change our lives forever, next weekend begins the season of Advent. I want to touch on what Advent is for just a moment. I know that there are those of you sitting here tonight who could stand up and explain the season of Advent better than I could. And then I know that there are people sitting here tonight who are very familiar with the word and think they know what Advent is, but please don't ask me to stand up and explain it. And then I imagine some of you are thinking, well, I've heard that word before, but I have no idea what it means. So we're just going to touch on it very briefly, and if you want to know more, Google it, okay? But Advent begins the fourth Sunday before Christmas Day. So if you look at December 25th on a calendar, you count back four Sundays, that's the first day. So that will be next weekend. It begins um, the church year, the church liturgical year, the Christian church liturgical year. We don't start our year on January 1st. We start it with preparing for the birth of the Christ child, which makes a lot of sense. And Advent comes from the word Adventus, which means coming, and it's a time for us to prepare for the coming of Christ in various ways. 
Now think about this. I think these are kind of interesting. This first one I don't think really comes to us very often as Christians, but it's a time to prepare for the promised coming of the Messiah to the Jews. That's not one that we think about very often. It's a time to prepare for the coming of Jesus being born in Bethlehem. That's the one we pay attention to during most of Advent, the time leading up to Christmas. It's the time to prepare for the promised return of the risen Christ. And we touch on that during Advent, but not as much as the birth of Jesus. And this last one, I think, is one that's really good to keep in mind. It's time to prepare for the continual coming of Jesus into our hearts and minds in fresh ways as we continue to move forward in our faith journey. I think that's a good one to keep in mind. So, our scripture lesson tonight from the Gospel of John, those first 14 verses, I think are so appropriate to what we're talking about. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who's the Word? Jesus. Jesus is the Word. And then the scripture starts to talk about John. And that, of course, is John the Baptist. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. We need to be aware that Advent begins next weekend. <clears throat> and we have a choice to make. I think for a lot of us, maybe not all of us, but for many of us, we are more influenced by our electronics than we know. We have a tendency to have the TV on, or the radio on, or our PC, or laptop on, or iPad on, or we're staring at our smartphones most of the time. And some of the information that we're gleaning from all of this is good, but there's a great deal of information that we're getting that is useless, and a great deal of this information that's coming at us is advertising. And as much as we want to think we're not influenced by advertising, there have been studies that prove that is absolutely not the case. There was a study that proved that people who were watching TV and during the ads would go into the kitchen to get something to drink, but they could still hear the ad, were influenced by it. We cannot help but be influenced by all that, all that, is, that is coming at us constantly. And the world would have us just jump into this fray of frenzied consumption. That advertising will really start to work on us and start to make us believe that we really need something that we didn't even know we wanted. And that if you don't buy it quick, you're going to lose out. I don't think I've ever been more frustrated than this year by Black Friday advertising. My goodness. And maybe this is because I'm still feeling singed from all the political advertising that was at the beginning of the month. It wore me out. We had stores opening on Thanksgiving. I mean, let's think about this. What is the mad rush to this? We don't have to give in to this. We have a decision to make. We don't need to control other people, but we need to pay attention to what we're doing and how we're spending this time. In addition to this, I think that it's not unusual when we think about Advent to think of it as kind of a churchy word. It's something that we hear about here at church. And it's really something that the church takes care of, OK? And we kind of get that sense. Next weekend is Hanging of the Greens, an absolutely beautiful service here and on Sunday morning. Absolutely glorious service, the first weekend of Advent. And we, and we take it all in, and we are spiritually moved, and we leave this place just filled with joy, but we don't take Advent with us. And the very following week, Gifts in White, another beautiful service that happens the second week of Advent. It'll happen here Saturday night and on Sunday morning, where we've been talking about it. We bring gifts for folks who are served by our four core agencies, things they really need, just wrapped in white, and we surround the chancel or fill the chancel, and it feels so good, 
and we are so filled, and we think Advent's being taken care of, and we leave here, but we don't take Advent with us. We really don't. How many of you talk about Advent at home? It's just not something that we do. And it's something that if we truly pay attention to the season of Advent, this whole time leading up to Christmas can feel so different. Of course you're going to go ahead and buy your Christmas presents. Of course you're going to go ahead and entertain and go to parties. Of course you're going to go ahead and, I mean, all those good things. Of course you're going to go ahead and do those things. But when you have the balance of paying attention and being intentional about this season of Advent, you're going to have a sense of peace you wouldn't have otherwise. You're going to be centered in a way that you wouldn't be otherwise. It doesn't have to feel like a mad rush, a mad dash. It just doesn't have to. Now, if we want to take Advent home, how in the world do we do that? Well, I have a way. I'm glad you asked. OK. Next weekend, we start lighting the Advent wreath. How many of you have an Advent wreath at your home? How many of you use it? OK, less hands went up. OK, see, me too. I've got one at home too, and the candles are dusty on it. An Advent wreath is a wonderful way to keep you reminded of Advent. And here's the thing, it doesn't have to be a wreath. It can be so simple. You get yourself a round dinner plate or a round platter. You go and buy one white pillar candle about that big around and about that tall. It sets in the middle. You get four votives. They can all be purple. That's fine. The tall ones. And you put them in those little glass cylinders. And you put them around that. And you've got yourself an Advent wreath. I mean, when you think about how simply Jesus was born, why can't that be the most beautiful Advent wreath you've ever had? And then you take your Advent wreath and you put it somewhere where you're going to be reminded of the season of Advent every time you see it. So you put it on your kitchen table as a centerpiece or you put it on your coffee table in the living room as a centerpiece, and every time you go by that Advent wreath, you are reminded of what season this really is, and you feel a sense of peace. Maybe you offer a prayer, and you're reminded of how beautiful all of this is. And on your, I call it the flipper page, of your bulletin, Advent devotions to use at home, OK? Take this home. When you take everything home with you, truly, Put together a simple Advent wreath, or use the one that's in the basement that you haven't pulled out for a while. This tells you exactly what to do. The first Sunday, or you can do it Saturday if you want, light the first purple candle. There's a little scripture there to read, and there's another part to read with a prayer. Do it yourself. Do it with your family. Just do it. Just do it. The next week, you light that first purple candle again and the second purple candle. But all the instructions are right here. Start a new tradition in your home. Start a new tradition with your kids. Start a new tradition with a neighbor or a friend. Just start a new tradition and help remind yourself of what an important time of year this is. How will you use the season of Advent this year to prepare your home, your mind, your heart for the coming of this Christ child. What will be different from last year? And when Christmas arrives, will you all be already be in love with the baby whose birth we celebrate? Will you welcome Jesus into your home and into your heart in a way that changes your life forever? You may notice that Holy Communion is not in your bulletin tonight. I just think we deserve it. Because we normally have Holy Communion the first weekend of every month, and the first weekend in December is Hanging of the Greens, and Holy Communion is not a part of that service, which is absolutely fine, we're going to prepare by having Holy Communion. 